بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وبعد Respected brothers, sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I would like to discuss today with all of you a very important issue, an, an issue that I personally feel very strongly about, but I haven't discussed it up till now. And I actually don't like to talk about these issues because they might be slightly controversial. And I tend to stay away from these kind of things, but I think it's really important that it was highlighted and it is brought to our attention and what approach we should take with regards to these issues. Um, and the issue is that we live in a time where I personally feel that we live in a time of chaos and anarchy in terms of Muslims bickering fighting and bickering fighting to the extent that people are easily accusing one another of kufr, disbelief, and blasphemy, especially blasphemy. You've said something, you are blasphemous. You've insulted Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa You've insulted the Sahaba companions, radiallahu anhum. You, you have uh, uh, committed blasphemy against such and such imam, or you, you've said this, you've said that, etc. And this happens a lot. It's happening a lot. Very easily people are labeling others as kafir or others as blasphemous. This used to happen in the past as well, but it's become more common or more open because of the age we're living in. We live in the social media age. We live in the YouTube world, uh, the WhatsApp world. And if some of you are follow, do follow what's going on in the world, I mean, it's sometimes it's chaos and anarchy. I see on YouTube sometimes, subhanAllah, that there's one video attacking another video, and then this video is attacking this video, like, like a person in this video is attacking this person in this video. So... The first point I want to mention here is that Islam, first of all, of course, we, we take it very strongly and we, we, it's very important for us that we have love for Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophets and the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum, the companions and the Ahlul Bayt, the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the awliya, the pious people, the Imams, the righteous. It's part of our deen, of course. But sometimes what happens is that some people, they restrict Islam to just that. Islam is not just about discussing, debating uh, past personalities. Like the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, like the awliya, like the Ahlul Bayt, like the Prophets. It's also about acting upon teachings of Islam in relation to our day-to-day -day life. Such as, you know, dealings, monetary dealings, social dealings, salah, prayer, fasting, hajj. You know, how, how we treat our family members, marital issues, divorce issues, business, trade, commerce, you know, rights of the neighbors, rights of parents, rights of children, rights of people around us. There's so much in Islam day to day of our day to day practicing of Islam that we need to learn about. But some people, the only thing they restrict Islam to, and I'm not saying it's not important, it is important, but to restrict it to just discussion and debate about the companions or the, the Sahaba or the family of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and massive debates go along that whether Muawiyah Radiallahu Anhu was better than Ali Radiallahu Anhu or was Sayyidina Abu Bakr better or Sayyidina Ali Radiallahu Anhu was better etc etc and this happens a lot and like I was saying if you are following some of the events that are taking place this happens a lot in the subcontinent especially in India and Pakistan. I'm not too sure about Bangladesh, but it happens a lot in India, Pakistan. And from India, Pakistan as well, a lot in Pakistan. Sometimes you think that the Pakistani you know, community, the public down there, I don't know what's happening to them. It's a very powerful country. It's a very strong country. And the non-Muslims, they fear Pakistan. It's, it's, and if Pakistan can become good, then subhanAllah, Muslims can have a, a great ascendancy. But so you think that it's someone making these the communities in Pakistan do this where small small issues on small small issues certain groups slash scholars continuously they fight and accuse one another of kufr of ins of blasphemy of insulting uh, uh, accuse them of blasphemous statements kufr statements and it's mostly on the basis of what they said or you know just semantics hair splitting polemic polemics it's all based on that and it continues it's continuous it's like and like i said that this has become quite common in this day and age because of youtube now like if you go on youtube 
you'll find subhanallah like there'll be one scholar uh, or one imam or one sheikh he's just sat behind a video and recording a 20 minute clip against this person because he said this so this guy's an insulter of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam or he's ac accusing him, him of blasphemy against this sahabi or this companion and then that scholar or his followers or his supporters will then straight away record a clip it's like quite famous record a clip make it go viral how many views you have and how many comments and then it causes chaos and anarchy and like because people just sit it's like everybody wants to sit in front of a camera and record a video for youtube if you, i'm not saying that's wrong this is what i'm doing right now as well but it's just arguments and then counter arguments debates counter debates discussion refutations it's just continuous continuous soap opera that takes place and the public they get confused and this is why i think that you know this whole age we're living in social media is it causing more benefit for the muslims or is it more harm allah said about al khamr wal maisir alcohol alcohol and wine there's harm and sin in alcohol, uh, wine and um, uh, gambling. But there's benefits as well. And this is what we thought that internet and social media, there's harms in it. But there's also benefit, uh, benefit in, in you know, social media. But I think we're coming to a time where it seems as though that the harms are outweighing the benefits. So this is what happens. And then each person has their clip recorded and put online. And then they've got their supporters. There's uh, people against him, people for him. The, the video goes viral. There's comments. And it becomes like an entertainment. Sometimes the public just love the entertainment. This scholar spoke against this scholar and this scholar spoke against this scholar. So the important point that I really want to make here is that look certain times sometimes certain people they may make a statement whether it's a written statement whether it's a verbal statement maybe in a talk in front of the public in the masjid or whether online now that statement number one you could disagree with another person could disagree with that statement number two you may think it's inappropriate it's uh, something that can be taken as disrespectful towards someone, some sahabi, some companion, or blasphemous, could be taken like that. So, we, what we have to remember that our deen, our deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that, ظنوا بالمؤمنين خيرا Give good opinion, have good opinions about other people. Now look, there's one person, who is a non-Muslim, kafir. He says, I'm a kafir. Or she says, I'm, I disbelieve. I'm not a Muslim. And they've all their life, they've been a non-Muslim. You know, and they suddenly said, tweeted or wrote or uttered something which is blasphemous against Muslims or against the Prophet of Islam. Then of course, you know, they themselves, they have a whole history, a life of what? Of disbelief. And they clearly say, we're not Muslims, we don't like the Muslims. Or, you know, they clearly make a statement which is a statement of disbelief. That person is different to another person who looks like a Muslim, dresses like a Muslim, is always a Muslim, prays five times a day. You know, especially if it's a scholar, an alim, a sheikh, all their life wrote 200 books, is, is serving the deen, serving the community, sacrificing. You know, I, I actually tweeted about this, that it's, it, you know, why would anyone, especially scholars who spend their whole lives serving the deen, deliberately make statements of kufr or blasphemy? Do we think that they were just pretending to be Muslims this whole time? It's like, you know, were they just munafiq hiding that for, for 60 years or 50 years of their life, teaching, studying, being an imam, being a Muslim. So they really inside, they were just, you know, really they hated Islam and they, were, they, they deliberately committed disbelief. Or blasphemy the whole you have to look at someone's entire life their track record like take this person you have to what they've said the statement they've written or they've said has to be understood in light of their whole entire life and then you think that this could be a slip of a tongue sometimes people make statements it's a split, split a sli, a slip of a tongue it 
could be said in a better way, you could think. And, uh, and this is why we have this principle in Sharia, uh, in Deen, which many Imams, many Imams have said this. And it's commonly sort of accepted. Imam Ibn Abidin, rahimahullah ta'ala, the great Hanafi jurist, has made this statement as well in his books. And many others have said this, that when someone makes a statement, and there are 99, 99 ways of interpreting and understanding that statement to be a statement of disbelief. So you read it once and you think, okay, this looks like disbelief. You read it the second time, the third time, 99 times, it comes across as a statement of disbelief. However, there's one way in one time, one reading of that statement, it comes across as a statement of Islam, then you will abstain from accusing that person of disbelief. Because you're giving benefit of the doubt. We're giving benefit of the doubt. Why are we giving benefit of the doubt? Because that person's entire life, track record, history, life is a life of Islam. And that person is not just going to deliberately. First of all, you know, we're not here to judge anyway who's a Muslim and who's not a Muslim. But if, if there's a need, then before saying anything, you go to that person that, look, what I've understood from your statement is like this, this kufr or this... Uh, Blasphemy, is that what you really mean? He'll clarify, end of story. But what's happening today is that the person himself says, I don't mean this. He'll probably give a clarification video. Or you go and ask him and says, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I don't know if you took it that way. Simple, just end of matter, end of story. Nobody wants to talk to the person. And straight away they want to sit behind a video, YouTube, Yes, today I am coming with a statement. Such and such Shaykh and Imam, he said this in his talk. He's committed blasphemy. Don't you, can't you, you know, think of what to say? Uh, are you committing kufr and disbelief or blasphemy against the Sahaba, the companions? You know, who are you? You know, you have no knowledge. And then it becomes personal. And then, you know, it's crazy. It's, it's really crazy. And I feel very strongly about this. Um, I'll give you a look an ex a couple of examples. Before I give you the couple of examples, in that... You know, when the person himself is saying that, I don't mean it in the way that you've understood. He probably never even thought of that. Sometimes, by mistake, a slip of a tongue could have taken place. You know, when you're talking, giving a lecture, right now I'm talking, there's so many things in your brain. And, you know, you might just say something. Actually, in the hadith, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, you know, the famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, where he said that Allah is more, far happier than a person, when, when a person makes toba, Allah is far happier than someone who was in the desert with his camel and his camel got lost. And he looked for his camel and then he completely lost all hope and he went to a tree just to have a shade, etc. And lost all hope, meaning that's it, I'm going to die because I can't move from here and I'm thirsty. And suddenly he sees his camel and he becomes so happy and he grabs the camel. And out of the happiness he says, Allahumma anta abdi wa ana rabbuk. Oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Lord. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know, said it in a, in a positive way that this is how happy he became. So it shows that in happiness you could even say, oh Allah, I'm your Lord. But then if someone said, oh, wake up, wake up. I know you're happy right now. Do you mean that you're, you're the Lord and Allah slave? Oh, is that what I said? Okay, no problem. But today what would happen? Straight away, YouTube video. That man with a camel is a kafir. He said that Allah is his slave and he is Allah's Lord. Go against him. And then what would happen? The, the followers of this person who made a YouTube video will say, yes, he, tell him to make Toba, repent, make a repentance in front of the public because you said it in front of the public. Go crazy behind him. If you find him at the airport, beat him up. Because then the public don't have the brain. You know, the, those, those scholars or those people in authority, they sit in their rooms and make the videos and then the public, they get rage and then, you know, they go and attack. And uh, it, it, this, this, I'll give you a couple of examples for this. Um... Uh, you know, many many years ago, or two, three years ago, the incident that, that happened with Junaid Jamshid, the famous ex-singer, then he stopped singing, and um, then he turned to Islam, and then he, he became martyred, you know, he passed away, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. Even at that time, I was thinking about this, but I didn't say anything, and, you know, he, during his talks, oh, sorry, during one, one of his talks, uh, he said, he was talking about Sayyidah Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. 
the wife of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam you can see it in it's in urdu it's on youtube and she said something like this you have to be you know very careful nowadays that people say that oh you said this word or that word but anyway he was saying something like this that uh, aisha radiyallahu anha used to seek attention from the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, from the prophet and then he went on to say that that a woman can't change even after staying in the company of a prophet so don't try to change her she was created from a bent rib this is what she said and straight away there's like hundreds of people they want their limelight you know everyone wants to be famous uh, view to videos tell him to make toba he's uh, committing blasphemy against Aisha radiyallahu anha, the mother of the believers, and all over Pakistan. And then, you know, he was actually traveling somewhere and some people tried to attack him and, you know, they physically attack him, some bandits, you know, and they thought they were doing something right. And people, and he actually then had to come and he was crying and release another video to make tawbah. And I actually feel that he didn't even need to do that. Because if you look at the statement, okay, someone can say to him, the best way to deal with this would have been some sheikh, someone who, you know, if someone sees this, approach a great sheikh that he respects, that look, he's a public figure, uh, you know, maybe he doesn't have that much knowledge of Islam, and he doesn't really know how to say things. Um, he's, so maybe it's not the right way of saying it. So can you just have a word with him? The person will pick up the phone and say, Brother Jun Junaid, uh, how are you? Alhamdulillah, it's all good. You know, that day you gave a talk. Maybe that's not a right way to say it. If you want to say the same thing, say it this way. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that it's, you know, it wouldn't. Okay, I shouldn't have said it. Alhamdulillah, end of story, khalas, finish. But like he's committing blasphemy and, you know, kufr and make toba and retract. Even if you look at what he said, if you look at it, like, like I said, you, there's a right way of reading it and there's a wrong way of reading it. There's a positive way of reading it. There's a negative way of reading it. The people with clean hearts and minds, they read it positively. People with, you know, evil hearts sometimes, they read it, every, they see it wrong in everything. Now, when he said she was seeking attention from the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa he was mentioning the, the hadith, now whether it's authentic hadith or not. But what's wrong with that? If you're not going to seek attention from Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa who are you going to seek attention from? Any wife, you would want Allah's Messenger to yourself. I mean, that, that is a good quality. She wants attention. And then after that, he went on to say that a woman can't change even if he stays with the Prophet. Of course, a woman can't change. If you want to look at this positively, a woman will remain a woman. A woman can't become a man. A woman can't change because that's the nature. Even the greatest of women will be a woman. And this is actually the, the, the nature of a woman. I've actually given talks on marriage and I've talked about this. The hadith of the Messenger وسلم, said, a woman is created from a rib, which means from a man's perspective, a woman is different. Her, she's more gentle she's fragile she's sensitive and that's the beauty of a woman if a woman doesn't have sensitivity she's not that fragile she's not gentle she's not easily you know upset then that's not a woman then you've married a man a man wants a woman who doesn't have these qualities then sorry you go on you know you need to marry a man or something i'm not saying look again somebody might say you said you want to marry a man astaghfirullah blasphemy kufr it's like you know so no problem you know, a woman can't change. She will remain a woman. And that's the beauty of the woman. The beauty of a woman is in being gentle, fragile. That's why I say in my marriage talks to women, you know, just tell, put a sticker behind your back if your husband doesn't understand that you've got these feminine, beautiful feminine qualities, fragile, handled with care. So there's nothing wrong with that. I, he, there was no even need for him to make tawbah. Like as though he's committed the greatest kufr and blasphemy ever. But he had to, and he did it. Still people didn't forgive him. So... Somebody should have just explained to him in a nice way that, look, there are better words to use. Maybe just use some better words. I know you didn't mean this. Of course, you love Aisha radiallahu anha. Why would you leave singing and all of this and come into Islam? Just what, are you an agent of somebody and you were just hiding that you're still like, you're, you know, you're hating Islam. So, you know, you're trying to just, you know, one day, you know, I will try my best to make people go against Aisha radiallahu Of course not. It's just, he said it in a way that, you know, came out and, and probably could have said it in a better way. No problem. Making small things into huge and massive things. But there was chaos and anarchy on social media about him. And then public, as I said, they, they take the law in their hands and they attacked him. And um, Another incident, uh, just recently, one of the great scholars of, current day scholars of Pakistan. Uh, this is the Grand Mufti of Pakistan. Sheikh Mawlana Mufti Muhammad Rafi' Uthmani. Hafidhahullah Ta'ala. May Allah... Uh, protect him 
uh, he's quite old in his early 80s maybe 84 years of age uh, and subhanallah and i'm not saying this because you know he's kind of my teacher i mean i've not studied in a classroom with him but uh, like i showed him a few things when i was studying uh, and he's a brother of my teacher sheikh al-islam of tatak uthmani hafizahullah and i'm i'm saying this across the board whether it's my own scholars or other groups or other communities the third example i'll give you of a of a you know someone who might not be related to me now he recently number one in a jumu'ah talk he gave a, a talk uh, and he said he was talking about, I mean, the whole talk, people don't look at the whole context. It's a half an hour Jumu'ah talk. Now you have to look at the context. It is Pakistan. Pakistan, again, Muharram month becomes volatile. Shia, Sunni, crazy. There's people I know when I was studying, we always heard every Muharram, someone's killed someone. X amount of people have died. The Sunnis have gone to a Shia place and they put a bomb and, and so many people died because a bomb was put in different uh, Shia, uh, Shia um, worship places. And some Shias, they just, they've gone on their motorbikes and they've just gone and shot and killed and threw the, threw the dead bodies against the wall against some madrasas. I remember when the madrasa I was studying, some students said uh, outside there's about four or five different bodies dead on the, on the ground. Who are they? Just random Sunnis, Shias went on the motorbikes, bang, 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 they shot them, just threw them against the madrasa. Here, these are your Sunnis. This is what happens in Muharram. Now, in this context, this is the great Grand Mufti of Pakistan. He's giving a talk that this Muharram, we shouldn't make this where people are fighting and killing and murdering one another. The whole context was about that. So try to, you know, try to reduce this or try to sort of um, uh, try to explain this to the people. He was saying this, and in the middle, he actually made a statement. He said, look, Shia are also our brothers. They are also Muslims. Then he said, some Shias are Kafirs, but the ones in Pakistan are Muslims. They were together with us in building Pakistan. They were side by side as Sunnis, Muslims, in making uh, in informing this country of Pakistan. They were together with us when we fought against the Qadianis and, you know, legislated against, or, or sorry, we, uh, um, uh, we, we worked together in making the state declare Qadianis as non-Muslim minorities in Pakistan. Now, this is what he said. Now, from the whole talk, some people on YouTube, they like this. You know, they like controversies. They like, you know, bring something which is sensationalist. So you get more YouTube clicks, videos, and then have your adverts in your video as well. So then you can make your money. That, that's what it is. There's one YouTube uh, you know, channel that just took those three minutes. The whole talk is taken out. Just those two, three minutes from the whole talk and put Mufti, Taq, Mufti Rafi Uthmani on Shia. And then people are just listening to those three minutes as though he made a special statement. This was in a context of a talk, number one. Now, when that happens straight away, Within, like Mufti Muhammad Rafi Uthmani is known as Mufti Adam Pakistan, the Grand Mufti of Pakistan, a revered scholar within those Muslims who affiliate themselves to the scholars that were connected to the Dar Ulum Deoband Seminary. Okay, this is the way I like to describe because names, Deobandis, all of that, I don't like that. Um, so, you know, they have their own, but within them, straight away on that day, some other scholars, that's it, it's easy, I don't have to go anywhere, YouTube, Phone, Bismillah rahman rahim You know, we condemn Mufti Rafi Uthmani for saying this, for saying that. But like, relax, relax, take it easy. This is your scholar, your own brother. Pick up the phone, you know, try to contact him. Sheikh, Salamu Alaikum, how are you? Is everything okay? Is everything well? This was a statement you've made. I don't think it's right. Is, is that what you meant? And if you disagree, you could disagree with that statement. Then say that, look, you know, personally, I feel that this is a wrong statement. If you can, maybe in the next Jumu'ah or maybe this evening, just get a video recorded and just clarify, then inshallah, things will be okay. But no, nobody wants to do that. He actually had to do that. Within two days, he released another two minute audio on YouTube to clarify. And he said, look, what I was saying was in a different context. And these are my views about the Shia, that there are certain Shias who hold beliefs that constitute kufr and some are not and this is our fatwa from Darul Karachi and he clarified despite clarifying some people still because they were planning that video they still come out with videos and you know crazy stuff now what he said like I said 
a positive person would think, okay, that was a whole context, number one. Number two, what what did he say? If you look at it, you know, you could say, Shia, our brothers. You know, sometimes you, when you, in the context, when you say brothers, you don't really mean a Muslim brother as well. You know, brother in humanity, you can think like that as well. Especially when he says, these are our brothers who contributed and helped us in forming Pakistan. That looks like fellow citizens, you know. In the olden times, when Pakistan was being formed, uh, there was a slogan within great scholars of India. They used to say, Hindu, Muslim, brother, brother. Hindu, Muslim, like we don't want fights. Muslim, Hindus, let's live like brothers. That doesn't mean they were saying Hindus are Muslims. Muslim, Hindu, brother, brother. So he's saying they are our brothers, they are our citizens. You could have taken that if you were positive. Uh, and then he said they are Muslims. He actually did say some are kafir but the ones in pakistan now again okay they are they must be in pakistan because and people were then finding old videos of some shia saying some really bad things look this is what the shia of pakistan says he's saying ali is god but mufti rafi uthmani is saying that the ones in pakistan are muslims so, okay he's not talking about every single corner every single one generally he's saying and then even that you could disagree with him you could say no sheikh 50 percent i think whole beliefs of so just discuss it there's no need to make it like a big massive issue of controversy and then start accusing him and then he said they made pakistan with us there's nothing wrong with that another scholar you know he made a youtube video straight after that and he said you know this who made you mufti azam of pakistan this is a younger much junior you have to also think mufti rafi uthmani he's old 84 sometimes you know when you're old as well you know you 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 have to you have to think someone in the 80s you know, they're not they, they, they could they, they, there's more likelihood of the slip of the tongue that's why some of the muhaddithun they used to say that when they used to relate hadith in latter uh, latter days they stopped relating hadith because they said ikhtilat you know they could easily forget because your mind is weak your body is weak this is another one much younger than him Releasing a YouTube video in front of the public, he said, Who made you Mufti Azam Pakistan? And then he said, This Mufti of rent. That's what he called him. Like basically someone's hiring him. Basically he's being paid. This is an accusation. Now again, I can make a statement. Okay, I don't know what he must have just said it like Mufti of rent or whatever. But still these kind of words, accusation. A same, an, a scholar from the same denomination. Maybe a student or the student of the student of the sheikh. So these kind of things are, are really, really bad and, you know, we need to sort of be very careful about this. And finally, another third example, there's another scholar in Pakistan called Dr. Asif Ashraf Jalali. Hafidahullah. He, a very famous scholar, massive following, mashallah, speaks very well, has a lot of knowledge. I don't agree with, with everything that he says, but um, very passionate, a lot of good things as well. Uh, and he is affiliated to the scholars who follow the teachings of Mawlana Ahmad Rida Khan al barelwi Rahimahullah, who's passed away, who, whose views that many of them I disagree with as well. Now, within the scholars who follow the views of Mawlana Ahmad Rida Khan, a massive, massive quarrel ensued, massive dispute. I don't know if it's still ongoing. But videos after videos, fights, quarrels, disputes, accusations. This Dr. Asaf Ashraf Jalali, a very learned scholar, he was talking about an incident of Fadak, which is quite famous uh, in the books of Bukhari, and I don't have time to go into it. But basically, he was talking about when Sayyida Fatima, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the daughter of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, went to Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu after the passing of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to ask for the, the garden of Fadak. So the, this is a discussion and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said that look, um, what I've understood from the hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that uh, whatever we leave, there's no inheritance. The prophets, they don't leave inheritance. So therefore, there's no inheritance. So anyway, he was discussing that. Now, this person is discussing. He has given talks and written books on the virtues of Fatima radiallahu anha. He's arranged special seminars just on the virtues and the high status of Sayyida Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha. All of that for years he's talked about her. But in one talk, one minute, he when discussing this issue, 
He just said that, you know, when Fatima radiallahu anha, and he didn't just say Fatima, he's saying like so many terms, Sayyida, Fatima, Afifa, the pure, the daughter of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the leader, our beloved, Sayyida, Fatima, you know, all these words, radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her. When she went to ask and demand for the inheritance to Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu, in this particular incident, she was mistaken. She was mistaken. There was khata of ijtihad. It was a mistake. She did not. She misunderstood the the ruling basically. That's it. And then he clarified as well after that. But people straight away, like other scholars, straight away jumped on him. You committed blasphemy. You committed, uh, you know. Kufr maybe, I don't know if someone said Kufr, maybe someone did, but blasphemy, they accused him, and then there was like people complain about him, and eventually he got arrested, and I think he's still in prison, in Pakistan, accused of blasphemy, just for saying this in this way. It's super crazy. So, this, this happens, absolute chaos, and the same thing to end, the same thing has happened, you know, many great scholars of the subcontinent Many great subcontinent scholars, those who are affiliated with the Dar Ulum Dauban Seminary, like Sheikh Maulana Muhammad Qasim Nanotwi Rahimahullah, Sheikh Maulana Rashid Ahmed Gangohi Rahimahullah, Sheikh Maulana Khalil Ahmed As Saharan Fui Rahimahullah, and Hakim Al Umma As Sheikh Maulana Ashraf Ali At Tanawi Rahimahullah Ta'ala. These great scholars, they have been accused of blasphemy. You know, this is a massive debate between those who are affiliated to Dar Ulum Dauban and those who are affiliated to Mawlana Ahmad Rida Khan. Now, this is what happened. They made certain statements rather than reading them in the right way, in a positive way. The accusation against Sheikh Mawlana Qasim Nanotwi Rahimahullah is that he dis denies that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final prophet, like the Qadianis. Now he himself, all his life, he's reading hadith, he's teaching all his life. And he says, I believe in Khatman Nubuwa, I believe in the finality of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Other books are saying this, his daily, his writing, his teaching his students, everyone knows this is his whole life, he's always saying this. But in one book, one statement, when explaining a hadith, he said something and in which you could understand it in that way. So just to pick that out and then accuse him that he denies that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a final prophet. For me, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the same with the others as well. You, entire life, I mean, why would Hakim al Umba, Sheikh Mulana, Sheikh Mulana, who wrote thousand books, you know, great books in Urdu, in Arabic, his teaching, his sacrifices, all his life, in all the teachings of Islam, why would he deliberately sit there and start committing, you know, sort of blasphemy? Why? Why would he do that? Like, was he hiding when he was writing hundred books? Rather than that, he could have just gone and played cricket instead. Why spend so much energy and time dedicating your life than, you know, if you were hiding all of this? So he said something in a way you could read it in, 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 a, in a positive way as well. He was trying to explain something else. And this is what happens when people have this in a community. And I'm ending with this. A community that easily gets raged and thinks negatively. Today you attack people from another group or people who don't follow your own sheikh. Then you start attacking people within. Then you start attacking your own teachers and your own brothers and your own sisters. This is what happens. Because your mind is just like anyone said something which slightly um, sounds blasphemous. You straight away go and attack them. And the non-Muslims, the real enemies, they are having a field day. They're saying, yes, Pakistan is a very strong country. Let's make them just fight. Let's create YouTube and social media. You know, before they were in their own mosques, so no one used to fight that much. Now, just make YouTube. Maybe, who knows, that could be the reason why it's designed. Let them keep on fighting, fighting. They are, this fight about Fatima radiallahu anha, constantly for months, fighting, fighting. Whilst they are busy fighting, what we're doing? We're uprooting Masjid al-Aqsa. We're building something, Israel, whatever. Whatever we want to do, we'll do them. You keep on fighting about, you know, who said what and how he said it and could have used this word or could have used that term and could have done this. Keep on, make them fight. Let them fight and we can get whatever we want to do, get done. 
This is why my plea to the Muslim community, whether you're in Pakistan and you understand English, or you're in India and you understand English, this happens in India as well, or in the Western countries as well, there are certain scholars sometimes and people connected to Ilm just fighting and arguing with one another. There's no problem in disagreeing. That's always happened. Ikhtilaf, that's always happened. Positive ikhtilaf with Ilm, nice problem. You can say that, look, this is your view, and is this definitely your view? I disagree with your view and this is healthy debate people learn you know you, you gain knowledge and you find more about Islam positive healthy you know sort of discussion dialogue and writing and speaking about things no problem with that but attacking and easily accusing other people of blasphemy and kufr because of one statement or one sentence or one verbal utterance this is what I'm cautioning against. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me the ability to understand and all of you as well. Jazakumullah ta'ala khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.